Hey, Remote Pilot 101, Jason here. The Part 107 test is always changing, especially now with the renewal. What we're finding from the renewal is the initial and the renewal test, well, they're two totally separate question banks. They originally pulled some over from the initial to the recurrent, but a lot has been changing. And here's some new questions that have come out, and we've actually seen some crossover on these questions in the initial as well as in the recurrent. By the way, please remember Remote Pilot 101 has you covered. As a lifetime member, you get access to our complete initial course as well as our complete recurrent course. 20,000 past tests now. Thanks to Remote Pilot 101. What a blessing because of amazing clients like yourselves. Let's look at three of these new questions. What antidotal phrase can help reverse the hazardous attitude of impulsivity? Remember, we have hazardous attitudes that we need to learn to avoid. What does it mean for the impulsive person? Or what else is there? There's macho, there's resignation, there's impulsivity. What does it mean? What is the antidote? What would I tell myself if one of my hazardous attitudes was impulsivity. Would it be A, it could happen to me, B, do it quickly and get it over with, or C, not so fast, think first. What does an impulsive person do and how would they fix it? Well, we would answer that as C, not so fast, let's slow down, let's think this thing through. Let's look at another question here together. An ATC radar facility issues the following advisory to a manned aircraft pilot flying north in a calm wind. Unmanned aircraft operations at 9 o'clock, 2 miles. Where should the remote PIC and the crew, if applicable, look for this traffic? This is one of those you have to read two and three and four times to truly understand. You want to try on your own, pause this video because if you get this one, you're getting good at the FAA testing how they write test questions because this has trick question written all over it. So take a stab at it. Pause this video, see if you can work through this question here. All right, if you didn't pause this video, I'm going to reveal this answer to you. Let's read it one more time so it truly makes sense to us. An ATC radar facility issues the following advisory to a manned aircraft pilot flying north in a calm wind. Does it matter that they're flying in a calm wind? This is, they're adding extra words in there for us. What they say though is unmanned aircraft operations at nine o'clock, two miles. Where should the remote PIC and crew, if applicable, look for this traffic here? Well, let's start with drawing this out. I am a visual learner here. And in your actual test, you'll be given pen and paper, pencil and paper, so you'll be able to draw this out. Let's first start with where is north? Let's draw out where north is and put that down there. Okay, great, I've got north drawn out. So my aircraft then is heading to the north. So let's go ahead and look at that now. When we get, as manned pilots, when we get traffic alerts, they give it to us in reference to a 12-hour clock here. So they said the drone operations were to our 9 o'clock. So you can picture that now, right? So the question then is, an ATC radar facility issues this statement, unmanned aircraft operations, 9 o'clock, 2 miles. Where should the remote PIC and crew, if applicable, look for this traffic? Where should they end up looking? If you answered west, that's not the correct answer. And you might say, why? Read the last sentence again. Where should the remote PIC, that's why I put the drone on there too, where should the remote pilot in command and their crew look for the airplane that's flying? They should look back towards the east. See how they trick you. You're talking airplanes, talking airplanes, talking airplanes. Where should the drone pilot look? They're good at tricking you. Let's do one more real quick. You need to operate your small unmanned aircraft system in close proximity to the Elizabeth City CGAS Regional ECG Airport. What frequency should be used to contact ATC? This is an interesting question because this sits in the database as this. What frequency should be used to contact ATC? Yet the FAA has reeled that back in and said, wait a second here. We want you to issue authorizations and waivers, please, as a Part 107 operator, don't go calling towers. Yet their questions say this. I just want to point that out there. 
But for the sake of the initial test here, let's look at this. What frequency should we use? Hopefully you can see that, uh, or you can punch in and zoom in a little bit there so you can see that just a bit better. What frequency is that control tower frequency? 120.5. Zero, as you can see there. You have to get good at reading sectional charts. We just did a video on understanding complex airspace. I've done webinars previously and live streams on understanding VFR sectional charts. The majority of your research test is going to be made up of sectional charts and airspace. The majority of your initial test is going to be made up of regulations, there's going to be some weather in there, and there's still going to be a lot of charts in airspace. So hopefully you're already a remotepilot101.com client and customer. One of those 20,000 pass tests and you work on your current perhaps. Thank you for that. If not, please sign up. Links are in the video description below this video and enjoy the rest of your day. We'll see you guys.